Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a complete beginner's guide for Dredge, shall we? This is a fantastic fishing RPG with a supernatural, mysterious element running through it. And while at the outset it appears to be rather simple in what you can do, there's a lot of technical elements and fine-tuning that can be done with some of your fishing and there are some tips that aren't really explained in the game. So what I'm going to do is start up a brand new file of Dredge so that you can play along, follow along, and I will explain my thought process as I describe the controls, the UI, some tips and tricks, how to fish, how to upgrade, where you might be, want to be going, how to stay safe, but in a non-spoilery way. I'm not going to tell you the story. I'm not going to show you the fastest, quickest way to do anything in this game. Instead, I'm going to provide you with the fundamentals so that you can enjoy Dredge at your own pace. Because it's really a great game, and it's kind of off the beaten path, not your typical 100-hour game. It's a nice, uh, tight package of a game comparatively with how bloated some things can be now but at the same time um, you can still just really luxuriate and take your time in this game and not be rushed even though sometimes it feels like you're rushed so let's go ahead and fire up a new game just sailing our boat good day Job listing. Angler wanted. Well, I'm an angler. There's me. Uh, visibility. Not so good. Oh, God. My boat. Alright, the lighthouse failed. You're supposed to show me the rocks. The morning light fills your eyes, and you try to sit upright. You're lying on the cold, wet dock where you collapsed the night before. A short man is shouting orders at a handful of workers disembarking from a boat nearby. The man notices you. Welcome to Greater Marrow, I must say. Quite the dramatic first impression. I see you've already introduced yourself to the jagged rocks along the bay. So this is the mayor, and he's got quite the jovial way of talking about me crashing and ruining my life's work. Did you not see the lighthouse? It was shining right at you. I didn't see it. Ah, well, I'm glad to see our new fisherman upright and breathing. I mean, this is a bad first day on the job. I'm supposed to impress these people as, you know, the new fisherman. And yet, uh, I crashed. Your boat was hopelessly damaged, but I've had a few of the locals move your things to one of our old vessels. We'll catch up later to discuss more details. I'll let you get out there to catch some fish. See if you can fill your cargo while you get your bearings in the light. Pursuit added, as you see in the upper left. Finally, I don't suppose I need to say this, but get back by sundown before the fog rolls in. Keep a close eye on the time. It can really creep up on you. Okay, so... Let's talk about what we see on the screen. In the upper center of the heads-up display or HUD, you'll see that it says Monday, day one, 6 a.m. And there is a gauge underneath that with uh, that's circular that kind of goes light blue on the, the right side, has an anchor on it. And to the right of that, there is a compass. We see that we're in Greater Marrow. So a few things I want to explain about this. Number one, you start on day one. That's just the first day of the game. The day number doesn't really matter uh, unless you're trying to keep score or get some achievement for, you know, beating it really quickly. But the number of the day doesn't matter. You're not under the gun or under the, you know, on the clock for anything um, except fish will spoil and go bad if you leave them on your boat for too long without selling them. But for the most part, um, you don't have to worry like or stress about using an extra day here or there. Also, time is not moving 
while you're at the dock. So when your ship is not moving, nothing is happening. You can be docked, you could be just sitting still looking at the map, but if you're not moving, you're not fishing, um, you're not doing something, the time won't move. So you, you can really just relax and kind of get your bearings, as the mayor said. As you see on the right of the screen, in the upper right, it says Y with the green exclamation point to look at our boat. So if I push Y, I go into the boat screen and it opens up a panel on the right that shows our cargo. It says information about our boat. First of all, we our max speed is 24 knots, our fishing speed is 85%, and we have zero lumens of light. We have no lights on this thing. The only fish that we can catch right now with the current setup that we have are coastal fish. We have a damage of three. This is basically how many hit points your hull has. We could take three damage before our ship is destroyed. If your ship is destroyed, you will load at your last save, and the game basically automatically saves when you come into the dock. Now, also, you'll see that I have this inventory, and I'm going to be playing on PC using a controller. So I'm using um, either the analog stick or the gamepad will allow you to move around in your inventory and you have all these squares and the fish that you catch will be of different sizes and it's kind of like Tetris, you have to arrange them in here. I have a motor and if I put my cursor over the engine, you see it's called the Peculiar Engine. It's operational and it gives me plus 14 knots of speed. It takes two hours to install or uninstall. So if you're modifying your ship by getting parts put on or taken off, it does take time off the clock. I also have this basic fishing pole, which is operational. It has a plus 35% fishing speed. The higher number, obviously the better, you fish faster. It takes less time out of the day to fish. And it only catches fish of the coastal variety. Every fish in the game has biomes that it can be found in, uh, as well as other parameters like only in the nighttime or in the daytime. And you'll learn where you can catch each fish and what equipment you need to catch the fish. But right now, um, I don't have much. I just have this basic boat that they've graciously given us. In the upper right, you'll also see that I have zero dollars. So I start with no money. We're in the hole. We have to pay off the boat that we crashed. Uh, so it's a tough first day. If I push the right bumper, or the R1, I'll go into my cabin, and from here, you'll see that I can look at pursuits, messages, map, and encyclopedia. Pursuits are our quests, so if I go to this, um, you'll see that I have core pursuits, and you can get, this can fill up with side quests and main quests, and I need to do this quest right now, which is a fresh start. If I push A on this, it opens up and gives you information. Anytime you're doing a quest, you can come here to get more detailed information. So we met the mayor of Greater Marrow, who sent me out to catch some fish and find my bearings. Seems nice enough. Warned me to be back before nightfall, though. Said something about fog. Bit dramatic. Not dramatic, as we will see. And then it tells you the task, and it gives you bullet points. It says, catch as many fish as I can, then come back to Greater Marrow. So pretty easy. Just basically a tutorial learning how to fish. I'm pushing B to close that. Um, I can go to the map. I can, and I can see the map, and it looks like this. Uh, you can zoom in and out with the right stick. You can place a marker anywhere you want with A and give it like a custom look with the bumpers. Uh, but these markers that you put on the map can only be seen if you're looking at the map. They do not show up on your uh, compass or anything like that. And you can push B to close the map. You can look at your encyclopedia here, and this gives you information on all the different types of fish there are, and you learn more about these as you catch them. And then there's messages, which you can find um, clues, bits of story in messages in a bottle or other places around the game, and they will be recorded here. Now also notice that each one of these, Pursuits, Map, Messages, Encyclopedia, has a direction on the gamepad so if i push when i'm out of this screen for example and out fishing if i push left 
on the directional pad, it will open up the pursuit. So if I push up, it's a shortcut to open up the map. I can push B to close this, and the only thing right now I can do is undock. So I can select undock by pushing this, or I can hold B to undock. So I'll just select it to quickly undock. And if you want to dock back up, if you want to do anything, although there is nothing for us to do, you can hold the A button to dock when you're close. And to steer your ship, as it says, you move forward with the left stick, and you can hold backward to go in reverse, and you can turn with left and right. Now you need to do that to get these tutorials to go away. You can rotate the camera with the right stick, right and left. You can adjust the, the height with up and down. And you can move to a fishing spot. And fishing spots are easy to find by looking for splashes on the surface, as it says. So you can see right ahead of us, in between those two buoys, there is a fishing spot. And once we get there, we need to push A to start fishing. So I'll also tell you that you can push X as it says in the bottom left, to turn on your lights. They take no power, so you might as well have them on. You can also hold the left bumper to open up this radial, which will give you more options. You have your, and you can use the right stick to select different choices here, like the foghorn or the spyglass. I'm going to select the spyglass, let go of left bumper, and the spyglass is amazing because if I push X with it, I can look around and find a fishing spot. So, for example, I can aim my spyglass at a fishing spot, and it'll tell you there's a coastal fish that you can catch here, but you've never caught it before, so it's question mark. But it does show you the shape of the fish. So notice that this spot above is actually a different kind of fish. So you can use this to plan your day, to look around, to find places to fish. Now, this, for example, is dredge, and if you ever see an icon with an X through it, a red X, that means you don't have the equipment on your boat to be able to interact with this, so you can't do anything at this spot. I'm going to push B to close my telescope. Now, before I move, I will again say, look at the clock. It is 6.16 a.m. Now, watch it as I move closer to the fishing space. You see how time passes as I move, but as soon as I stop, time stops. So, you can just evaluate where you want to go, plan your day, and save time and stop. I'm going to just go straight forward and do the fishing. Time is moving, but not badly. And once you get to the fishing spot, you'll see this circle with a hook, um, depending on what type of interaction. So this is a place where you can fish with a fishing rod. There might be a net or something else to see. Uh, if it's a net spot, or if it's a place to dredge, or whatever it is. Now, I'm going to push A to start fishing. Now, from this screen, it opens up the fishing um, interface. And in the right, you'll see that our cargo is visible. This helps you know how many fish you can catch. And on the left, you'll see the fishing minigame. So every different fish has a, a mini game and some of them are the same some of them are different right now we have a pretty simple one and you press x to start fishing and you need to press x when it the needle as it's rotating around clockwise when it's in the green fields on the ring around the fish if you push x you will get a burst of speed to pick up the fish however if you don't push anything you will catch the fish automatically it just takes more time. So if you're trying to be economical and catch as many fish as you can, it does benefit you to push the button when it's green to catch more fish and go faster before it becomes night. That being said, if you miss your timing, it will actually lower the fish back down. You see there's a gauge to the left of the wheel, and it shows, okay, you drop your line in the water, and you're trying to pull the fish out. Unlike some fishing games where, like, you have to worry about the line tension and the fish can get away, the fish don't get away in this game. It just takes more time if you um, don't do the mini game correctly. So once you catch the fish, you get information about it. And you can see there's a little 
context box that opens up that says this is a blue mackerel and now we're over in our cargo the fish is green i can move it around with the d-pad or the left analog stick i can rotate it with the bumpers and i can hold left trigger if i don't want this fish no time is passing while i'm doing this i have free time to adjust this i'm going to put it down here by my engine and you just push a to place it and then you go back to the fishing mini game but luckily the game doesn't automatically go to that they let you start it when you're ready so i'm going to push x bam 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 very easy and i'm just going to rotate this and put it here and you see quickly how this is legitimately inventory tetris um the fish these fish aren't too hard to place but some of the fish get really wild in their design You'll see it's random how many green spots there are on the wheel. You see, last time I only had two. I'm just going to kind of put these down. And don't worry if you miss the timing. It doesn't matter. You'll just catch less fish or it'll take more time. But you'll see that it says disturb water. It tells you what fish. And then it will tell you stock how many that you feel are in that location. And once there's no fish to catch there, it'll say depleted. It was adjusting as I went. It started out at like full, then goes to medium, then goes to low, then goes to depleted. And once this is there, you just push B to close it up and try to find another fishing spot. So I'm just going to go straight ahead to this fishing spot. You see there's a town right across the bay. And if I push up on the directional pad to open the map, the map is actually pretty well populated already. Points of interest are these black dots. So right across from us, you see the direction that we're facing. There's another town. There's something here, for example. There's something over here. And all of the map is here for us to explore. But in the beginning of the game, you really want to just stay on this area and do the quests before you venture out. Because you won't have the equipment to catch the fish. And the other areas are more dangerous. So I'm going to go right up here. And I'm going to just drop. And we can fish. Now notice again, it says stock medium, so there is a good amount of fish here. Not a ridiculous amount, but a reasonable amount. And we don't know what this fish is, so I'm going to push X, and this fish is harder to catch. You see how the green areas on the radial are smaller? And it already went to stock low, so there's not going to be that many fish. But look at this fish. It's a different shape. It takes up three spaces of my inventory, so I'm going to put it over here, and I'm going to try to fish. There we go. We've caught another one. I'm going to put it here. And now it's depleted. I'm going to put that there. All right. I'm going to push B to close this up. Time only advances when you're moving, fishing, or taking other specific actions. So luckily they explain that to you. And remember to get these tutorial windows to close. There, It has a progress bar on the bottom. You just have to fill it up by doing stuff. I'm going to go to this other fishing spot that's right over here. And I'm going to just fish but look if i try to fish you see how it has a red or i'm sorry a white slash i can't fish here because this fish is a shallow type and i don't have the right equipment to catch a fish in the shallows so if you want to find a fish that you do have the right equipment for and you don't want to waste time by driving all the way to a fishing spot and seeing if it's right remember to use your spyglass so this is a blue mackerel now i know what that fish is i see it that is a cod which is the kind of like corner piece fish so let's go get these cod i like usually not all the time but usually the bigger the fish the more money it'll give you you use money in this game to purchase upgrades for your boat to make your life easier to uh, give you more equipment to make you move faster all kinds of cool things i'm going to fish right here and this is a high stock unfortunately we probably won't have enough space to catch everything but we'll see i'm going to fish now, I've been practicing. I've been playing the game a lot. I love the game. By the way, if you want to see, I have a Let's Play of my very first time booting up the game. And I've been streaming the game, getting advice from people, playing the game, and learning through trial and error. I'm just sharing what I've learned from others and, and my own experience in this guide. So because I've been practicing, this is easier for me. But trust me, I mess up all the time. I'll actually show you what happens if you mess up. You see how it, it goes red and it makes that sound effect and the fishing line actually goes down. You don't lose the fish, it just takes more time, and time is money in the fishing world, as they say. 
got it. And I could catch one more. Sweet. So there is still a fish here, but I don't have any room. My, my boat is completely full. I could, if I wanted to, um, and I'll do it just as an example. I'll show you. If you catch a fish and there's no room for it because your boat is full, you can rotate it, and I can put this here. I can place this fish, and I have a full cargo. There's no space left. And you see I'm now selecting the blue mackerel, and I'll just hold left trigger to dump it. Now I'm ready to go. Now it's time to be scared. So remember how I was explaining? Um, select your lights by holding left bumper and um, then toggle it with X. Correct. So we have them right here. When they're on, there will be a blue kind of outline around the lights in the bottom left. Lights help you see but make you more visible too. So it does make you more visible to bad things in the night. Bad things in the night? What are you talking about? Well, what made us crash was not just negligence but was evil. This game gets real creepy at night. The mayor was not joking. You see the nighttime setting in. So you see how underneath the time in the upper center, there's that radial, and it has that blue. That's the time of day, and it's pulsing under the anchor. That is warning you. It's, it's getting dark. You see, you're in the black part of the wheel. It's getting dark out, and when it gets dark, bad things happen. I'll show you that a little bit. I'm going to turn on the lights. This glowing thing right here is a message in a bottle. So I can go pick this up, but we need to get home immediately. Now you see how an eyeball has appeared now that it's dark? That eyeball, I'm going to just stop. Remember, we can stop. We don't have to worry about things when we're stopped with time. That eyeball up there indicates almost like your character's level of sanity. You start to lose your grip and become afraid and the eye reflects that by changing color. It'll start to move from blue to a more orangish to a red. And when it's red, it means danger. It means bad things can happen. So I'm going to just go right over here really quickly, pick up this bottle by just interacting with it, push A to collect it, and it says 20th of August added to the cabin in the upper left. And you can push Y, and you can go to your cabin and open up your messages and you see we got a message and you can read this. Now this is part of the story. I'll let you read these on your own. Also, notice there's a badge on my encyclopedia because we've caught the blue mackerel and the cod. This is uh, giving us some information about how many we've caught. The more we catch, the more we sell, this will start to fill in even more. We don't know the price yet because we haven't sold it yet. Aberrations are different varieties of the fish that you can catch that are like mutated by the creepiness and best seen to explain that but that's just what that means so I'm gonna start heading home I've got my light on you see it's not really that bright but the nice thing is the lighthouse is there you can see providing some light and the buoys provide lights as well and you can see the town there's a house over there, there's a town over there, and then there's Greater Marrow around these rocks. So I'm going to just kind of move slowly. Exposure to fog and other things increases your panic. Bright lights and sleeping will reduce it. So you see how it's moving from blue to like this kind of greenish brown color? Our panic or our fear is increasing. As your panic increases, things will start to happen. You will see rocks that weren't there in the daytime and you can actually crash into them your ship can be attacked by strange monsters um and your character can lose uh lose their cool in horrible ways so you don't want to be out at night for the most part and yet there's a reward for going out at night because there are some fish that only come out at night and there are some things you can only do at night but you want to be prepared when you do that. If you get hit, if your boat gets hit by a fish or something bad, you you crash, you will take hull damage and you will lose the, some of the contents of your cargo. So you have to repair your ship, which costs money, and you lose some of the cargo, which is annoying. You see that big pink red ribbon in the sky right there? Just make a note of that. I won't talk about what that is or what those are, but they're important. 
and we're going to head back home. The eye generally will start to get more intense the later it is. If you are out past midnight, 2 a.m. ish, it starts to get really, really uh, red. You can stay out all night. Like, it's possible to take no damage, to encounter nothing bad, um, and just kind of get mildly creeped out by staying out all night. That's fine. But your character will need to rest to get rid of the um, hit to their panic. Because even in the day then, they will still be panicked and bad things can happen. So you, you have to sleep. I'm going to go into the um, dock and... I'm going to just hold A to pull up alongside this. You step onto the dock at Greater Marrow. The mayor is waiting nearby. Ah, I see you've returned in one piece. Very good. Before you head off to town, we should discuss the matter of your boat. As I mentioned earlier, your old boat was badly damaged, or too badly damaged to be repaired. However, I'm more than happy to sell you that replacement vessel, yours to own. I understand you may not have the necessary funds on hand, so we'll consider it a loan, but I want to make this easy for you. Until your debt is repaid, a tiny portion of your fish sales will go towards paying it off, so our wages are being garnished by this smiley mayor. A small amount of interest will go towards improving the town. Wait a minute. So to recap, you'll need to sell fish to the local market, paying off your debt, and in turn, keeping the population fed and satisfied. Understand, um, selling fish Helps the town and pays off my debt. Got it. Off you go then. Sell those fish while they're still fresh. And now, as we progress, more options in town, more places that we can go will open up. Right now, the fishmonger has just opened. You also see below where it says Greater Marrow, we have $50 of loan to repay. And we've opened up our storage. You have a storage space at the dock that is shared between all docks that you can go to that have a storage in the game where you can keep things um, that you don't want to have in your boat so you can make more space. But fish, unless you have a quest for a specific fish, you want to sell them because they do go bad, as they're saying. If I push Y and I go to my cargo, you'll see how it says this is a cod if I put the cursor on it. Its um, size is 2 feet 9 inches. Its condition is fresh. Um, or this is uh, an 8.2 inch blue mackerel but look the condition is stale so they've already dropped in condition because I've had them on my boat for a while so we want to sell these things before they deteriorate so I'm going to go to the fishmonger you enter a squalid shack on the fringe of the marketplace the familiar smell of fish fills the air flies buzz haphazardly around a downcast man behind the counter you're the new fisherman huh Surprised they found a new one so fast. What happened to the other one? He... It takes a certain type of person to last out here. It's not a life for everyone. It doesn't look like it. Anyway, to business. I'll pay you for fish. Bigger and fresher means more money. Some species are just worth more, too. Other towns on other islands might pay you different, but while you still got a de debt outstanding here, I'd suggest you work on paying it off first. So let's see what you've got. All right. So you can select your fish here, and he'll now tell you in the context box how much he'll pay. So like this fish is $18.11. This is $18.90. It's bigger. This one is bigger, sells for more. Now in the bottom right, you'll see if I just hold the X button, I can just sell all of my fish for $171.61. I'm going to do that. They paid off ha about half of my debt, and now I have $145.87 profit. So, I'm going to return to the town. The mayor is standing outside the fishmonger's store. Excellent work. I have no doubt you'll be able to provide for this town. Look here, I found this down by the docks. I'm sure someone like you could make something out of it. Why don't you take it? And what's he given us? A research part. What is this? Well, I'll show you. These can be used to upgrade our boat. And I will um, simply select this, and then you go ahead and push in the right stick to move this from the left panel to our boat. I'm going to put it in my boat. Oh, one last thing. Our local shipwright mentioned she might be able to make some modifications to your ship. You should pay her a visit. 
So now we can see the ship right, right here. And we also have a set of new options. We can undock, we can rest, and we can go to research. So let's go to research. Research, as you can see, allows you to spend that research part, which you can find or acquire through quests and stuff, on upgrading different aspects of your boat. You can move between these, as you see in the top ribbon, by right bumper and left bumper. You can go to engines, pots, uh, and all you could do right now is rods and engines. You can't do crab pots or nets at the moment. I want to give you a suggestion. Um, what I would recommend boosting up right now are these two and engines, but once we put a point into the improved outboard engine, which will make us move faster. I heard this on stream, and it's great advice. Do not put points into any of these other engines unless you really want to, but skip right to this expensive one right here because it's the most efficient upgrade for your engines and will help you go the fastest so you can focus on spending other stuff. So if I buy this hydraulic rod, if I research this, I will be able to purchase from the shipwright. I don't get this for free. I just have the capability um, that teaches shipwrights to sell you the hydraulic rod, which can help us catch oceanic fish, which we don't have that ability right now. If I get this flexible fishing pole, it will replace my current fishing pole, or I can, and now I can catch both coastal and shallow fish with it. So you can see these different rods have different properties of fish they can catch at different depths, different biomes and such. So what I want actually is um, the ability to catch uh, oceanic fish. These are big fish, so I'm gonna go for this one. I'm gonna hold A, and now we have a rod. And let's go to the shipwright. And as you walk into the yard, you see the shipwright making repairs to a damaged hull. She looks up at you briefly before turning back to her work. You must be the new fisherman. I can make improvements to your vessel in the yard. Mind you, I'm not in the business of doing favors around here. Payment is up front, and everything takes some time to install. Also, if you take on any damage from the rocks or any damage at all, she doesn't want to say scary stuff, I could patch it up, mostly. So this is where you come if you get damaged. She shrugs and gestures toward the hull she's currently attempting to repair. A number of wooden boards, all well above the waterline, are splintered and scratched. Take a look around. Just remember, the bigger the equipment, the longer it takes to install. So plan ahead. So when you go to her, you can see on the left, and you can get to her inventory by pushing in on the left stick. She's got categories for rods, engines, trawler nets, and lights. I can't install any nets at the moment. Um, I can buy, right away, a rusty outboard engine if I want. I can install a light, which would, you know, be more powerful than my current light. And I can buy some new rods. I have a rod for the shallow right here, but I also could buy this hydraulic rod. However, look how expensive it is. So, I bought this, and I can't install it because it's too expensive. I could buy this so I could catch shallow fish. I could buy this to make my um, ship go faster, or I could buy a light uh, to help me in the nighttime. I think right now, even though it doesn't um, make the most sense, we're going to be upgrading. So we won't need this simple skimmer later, but we can sell it back. So I'm going to just buy this and put it here. And you could, just to demonstrate installation, and you can see if I install this, I have to hold A. You see it's 10.16 p.m., it takes two hours, and it's now 12.16, and it's on the boat. I could sell it back for half price. If you want to be more efficient, um, I'm going to return to town. You could instead research, um, you know, put your research into the improved outboard engine or the flexible fishing pole and buy those first, but this takes two, and um, the improved outboard engine would, would have been more expensive than what we had anyway. So either way, you'll get there, and you could sell stuff back. Money in this game just takes time, and you have all the time you want. So now what we want to do 
is we could go back out and fish at night, but I don't really recommend that. I'm going to rest, and I'm going to wake up. Now, if you don't push the button, you wake up at 6 a.m., no problem, but you can wake up a little bit earlier than that, around 5 if you want, and you'll see the eyeball is gone in the top center of the heads-up display. My panic is gone, but I can go out and I can fish, and if I use my spyglass, you see that there are still nighttime fish out, even though it's pretty day light out. So what this allows you to do is kind of like try to go out and catch a nighttime fish before um, the sun rises in a safer environment if you're interested. So this is a good exposure to the first day of dredge and a lot of the mechanics this guide is going to be a series because there's a lot to explain there's a lot to unlocks as we go and i like to do everything in an organic natural fashion of just playing the game and discussing things as they emerge in the game instead of talking about stuff that you is way far ahead in the game that you have no context for so if you have any questions at all about the game, please post those in the comments below. I hope you're finding this to be useful and fun, and I hope you're enjoying Dredge. Everyone, I'll check you in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.